بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا بيا المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد uh, we usually take this time before Salat al Jum'ah to answer questions that have been submitted online. If you're interested in having your question answered, you can download our app. It's the Dar al Hijra app, uh, either on the uh, App Store or on the Play Store. Uh, or you can scan, there's a QR code outside with my picture on it. Hold up your camera, a link will show up. Click on the link, and then you can submit your question, inshallah. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Does the masjid allow Tablighi Jamaat? Could you please briefly explain your opinion on this? We allow everyone. There's, there's no one who is not allowed uh, to come into the masjid uh, as, long as, you, um, as long as you follow the rules of the masjid. And there's no reason for anyone not to be allowed to come in. Uh, we had a similar question previously also, like, you know, about uh, who we allow in the space. This is a community space. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, as far as an institution, we are a Sunni institution. Um, we, we try to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Um, and anybody who wants to come into the space as long as they follow the rules of the space and they respect the community and they respect the space they're more than welcome to come uh, could you please recommend a few good seerah books on the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam um in english i don't know how many have been translated there's there's a new book i think it was maybe within the past three years has just been published it's called muhammad and it's like a hardcover book. It has Muhammad written on it. Um, the, one of the more famous ones is by Safi Rahman Barakpuri called The Seal Nectar. Uh, there's another book that was, there's another very short seerah that was translated recently by Nuruddin Attar, which is also very good. It's also very short. Um, in Arabic, you, there are a lot of works that have been done on the seerah. Most of them rely on Ibn Hisham, which is probably one of the longer seerah books. Um, but a anything other than that, he has he has one called Al Ishara, which is also very good. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, there are a lot of Sira books. There are a lot of Sira books. But, um, but these are just a few. This is a good starting place. Um, if anybody wants uh, more information on them, they're free to contact me, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. I want to get information about Hajj 2023. Who does the arrangements? Please explain. Uh, so as an institution, we don't have a Hajj program yet, uh, but this year, I don't know what's going to happen. Last year, I know that the Ministry of Hajj, the Wazarat al-Hajj, took care of, I think, the United States, like United States, Canada, and Russia, maybe, I think, I th huh? And Europe as well. So they, all of the Western countries, they handled the Hajj for them, and they still allowed for the travel agents to handle for the other countries. This year, they might be opening it up to the local travel agents again. I, I don't know. I don't have any knowledge on it. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Could you please discuss the ruling on making wudu or mas over shoes versus socks when you have to make wudu prior to putting them on? Thank you. Wa alaikum salam. So uh, mas is basically, there's a difference of opinion, firstly, on if you can do it over cloth or leather socks. But how is it done and when is it done? Firstly, um, and I'll, I'll just give an example of somebody who's going to work. So somebody who's going to work in the morning, they wake up, they make wudu, a normal wudu with washing their feet, right? They're going to wash their feet. After they wash their feet, they put, they put their socks on and they put their shoes on. At work, lohar time comes in and they break their wudu while they're wearing their socks and their shoes. All right, this is the situation, meaning that he washed his feet, he left the house, he was wearing his socks and shoes. At Dhuhr time, he breaks his wudu, either he passed gas or he used the bathroom. Now what does he do? He goes to the bathroom, he makes wudu normally, except when he gets to his feet. Now he has a choice. If he's going to pray in his shoes, he can wipe over the shoes. If he's going to pray in his socks, then he has to wipe over his socks. And that's it. And what can he do? He, will, he can continue making wudu like this for one day. He can continue making wudu in this way for one day. There is a difference of opinion on what happens if he takes his socks off, right? Does, does he need to make the wudu again? Does he need to do this? All that you need to know, basically, as long as your socks are on, you can continue wiping over them. 
if you take your socks off, the most conservative opinion is that you have to make your wudu again. Uh, the most lenient opinion is that it's okay for you as long as you don't. If you take your socks off and you put them back on, then it's okay to continue wiping as long as when you took the socks off, you didn't break your wudu. But in general, as long as my socks are on, I can wipe over them. What kind of socks can they be? There are different types of socks. Um, the the Hanbalis are probably, the Hanbalis and the Shafi's are probably the most lenient on this. They allow cloth socks. So as long as the socks are not translucent, meaning that if I look and I can't see the skin, then they will allow wiping over those socks because they say that water cannot penetrate and the purpose is to wipe over them just like in leather socks, right? Leather socks, water can't penetrate. If the cloth socks are uh, you know, thick enough, I mean, obviously without soaking them, right? You're not pouring water on them. So how does must happen? I have wet, when my hands are wet, I just wipe them like this and that's it. Um, the, you don't need to do more than that. But the, these are in general the ahkam of how to do mas over over the socks or over the shoes. And like I said, if you're going to pray in your shoes, you wipe over the shoes. If you're going to pray in your socks, wipe over the socks. Oh, if you yes, and if you're traveling, you have three days. So the resident he has one day where he can continue wiping like this, and for the traveler he has three days. I want to ask in regards to selling tobacco products such as vapes and CBD from an Islamic point of view, where does the Sharia stand on the topic? Could you please present? I, I, this is something I'd spoken about before. Uh, refer back to the previous questions. Uh, if you walk in late to a congregational prayer, specifically Fajr, between the Rukur and the Sujood on the second Raka. Okay. And everyone is reciting the Shahud. Should I follow them? Yes, you should. So basically, how, how do I deal with, or if I walk in late for a prayer, the moment I walk in late for that prayer, that for me, so for example, if it's Salat al-Luhr, and I walk in on rakat number three, for me, this is rakat number, this is rakat number one, right? There's khilaf, I don't want to get into it, but, <laughs> but basically, in general, the easiest position is that this would be considered rakat number one for me. And whatever the imam does, I do, but... In the last rakat for the imam, so I will pray number three with him, and I'll pray number four for him, and for me, this will be number one and number two. So when I'm praying number two, when it's time for, he's doing tashahud, and he's doing a dua Ibrahimiyah, right? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. I only recite tashahud, right? I only do the tashahud, and then after the imam does tasneem, I get up, I complete the last two rakat, and in the last uh, rakat, I would do my uh, tashahud, and I would do my dua Ibrahimiya. I'm sorry? Oh, and only Fatiha. Why? Because for me, this would be rakat number three and four. Um, this, this can get a little bit uh, strange for Maghrib, so... <laughs> Like, if if I join Salat al-Maghrib, for example, in the second rakah, and the imam is sitting for tashahud, I would do tashahud with him. And for me, this is rakah number, no, number zero, right? Because I joined I joined him in tashahud. <laughs> and then I get up, and this is rakah number one for me, but the imam, he's going to do, he's going to do tashahud, right? Uh, so, and then the rakah after that, for me, it'll be rakah number two. So I would recite Fatiha and and in other surah, and I would do tashahud, right? <laughs> and then in the last rakah, I would just do fatiha, and I would, so how many tashahuds did I end up doing? Oh, I did four, <laughs> right? I did four, because I joined the tashahud of the first imam. And there's nothing wrong with that, but in, the, in those situations, any extra tashahud that there is, I would just do the tashahud. I wouldn't do the dua Ibrahimiyah. Uh, related with the wiping the socks. Yeah. Oh, so it's, oh, when does the timing start? Mashallah, excellent question. It starts when I break my wudu. It starts when, not when I put the sock on, it actually starts when I break my wudu. Uh, the height of the socks, there's khilaf. Um, so the, the most, I would say, lenient opinion is that as long as it's considered a sock in culturally, then that's something that would be that. So something like this, you know, you, have you seen like those half socks? Like, so there are socks that are like this and like this. Even culturally, we don't, we don't call them socks, right? We call them half socks and things like that. As long as they cover the ankle, there's general agreement, and I think that's the safest, uh, that's the safest way. So as long as they cover the uh, ankle, then it would be, uh, be acceptable. Uh, what is the meaning of flood water? I think this has to do with wudu and whether if that water can be used or not for wudu or not. 
So flood water, I would imagine that is water that is uh, mixed or like, you know, just like the floodings that have happened in different parts of the world. Is it permissible to use that water for wudu? So because it's a large amount of water, as long as I don't smell or taste or uh, see najasa, then it's permissible for me to use wudu. And Allah knows best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.